Hey, I have a bit of a problem. That problem is an obsession with Hewlett Packard calculators. Um, and today I want to share with you my latest acquisition. It's not technically a Hewlett Packard calculator, but it's very close. It is the Swiss Micros DM42. It is a clone of the venerable HP 42S, which uncontroversially is absolutely the best calculator ever made. Um, no one thinks otherwise. It, it's, it's the best. And I happen to have a few of them. This is my current daily driver, my second HP 42S. I've got a lot of HP calculators. Not all of them are out here. I figured I'd focus on this lineage. Um, this was a calculator released in 1988. And I got my one in, my first one, um, in 1993. I got it because I was an annoying, pestering child. Um, and I updated the autoexec.bat on my father's computer, for those of you who remember that, to say, hey, get your son HP42S. And I was a little bit spoiled. I was lucky to have some parents who had some cash. And uh, I got one of these guys. And I loved it, unfortunately, to death. This is the original one. I'm not going to zoom in and show you what state it's in. The cover plate's missing. This suffered um, water damage or some sort of solvent damage. I can't remember the exact circumstance of its death, but it died probably 10, 12 years after I got it. And um, I tried repairing it and it, 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 it's no good. So I've kept it really just um, to remind myself not to do this to, to my new calculators because I love this guy. Why do I love him? Well, I love HP calculators in general for a couple of reasons. They're all, well, not all of them, but all the good ones. A reverse Polish notation. This is not a great video to introduce you to what RPN means, um, but in short, it's a much more efficient way of using a calculator. You use less keystrokes to enter in formulas and do arithmetic, and it's also far less ambiguous. You don't have to worry about orders of operations and brackets and division and what order all that stuff comes in. It's completely unambiguous how you use it, and it's really easy to work with sort of nested formulas and data and, and stuff like that. Um, that's the first reason, RPN. Now, HP is not the only calculators to make RPN, only company to make RPN calculators, but the thing that really sets HP apart is sort of a unified uh, design aesthetic. Um, and it's really a case of form following function and the form being really good. This is, feels beautiful in the hand. It's got nice rounded edges. It's a plastic case. It's got reasonable weight. It's not too heavy. Um, the keys just feel great to press. Um, and all the functionality that you want is sort of just a thumb away. Um, and they've got nested menus that let you dive deep for rare functions, but you can reconfigure the menus to put the functions that you like at the top. And of course, it's all programmable. Um, so you can take common formulas that you use, store them in memory, and um, not only use them as programs, but then you can run solvers against that program. So say you have um, an amortization problem in finance and you want to find how many years it'll take to do something, you can set up a program that does amortization, then you can load that program into the solver program and say, I'm solving for this output, find the right input. You can do integration the same way and, and, and things like that. It's a really fantastic calculator. The calculator HP released before this was the 41, and there were a variety of 41s. I have, this is just a regular 41, I believe, yeah, just the original 41 right here. Um, this came out a few years before. It's just got a, I don't have a battery in this one. Um, it's just got a single row, um, very similar in terms of functionality. You can program it, but the 41s are expandable. So it has these little ROM slots up here that let you put in cartridges to, to load in programs. Um, so I love the 42S and I really didn't think about replacing it until a guy who saw my last video um, and saw me sort of briefly mention this monstrosity which is my attempt to build a new and improved 42S after the original one died. He reached out to me and told me that Swiss Micros made this guy. And the reason why I jumped on this was really twofold. One is it's got a much faster processor. It's been completely sort of the architecture is, I don't know why I keep on putting them back in the cases. They're hard to pull out. Um, the architecture is uh, modern. I believe it's an ARM chip. We'll open it up and have a look. Um, it has a bunch of additional sort of processing power, which is nice, but the UI and the UX and all the buttons for the most part are the same. And I'll get into the differences in a sec. But the big reason why I like this is it's got a USB port. Not only does that allow for charging, but it allows you to download programs and upload programs. Um, the 42 
you had to type all the programs in by hand. There was no way of storing them remotely. You could use the infrared output and print them out. So you could type them back in later, but there was no way to get the data back in unless you typed it back in. And so I used to have a bunch of really cool programs on here, um, but I've lost them. Uh, when you change batteries, you have to do it within a certain time or else the RAM falls off. And um, yeah, it's just hard to keep a catalog of programs. I remember um, I was at Physics Olympiad camp because I'm a nerd and um, a bunch of the kids there had their TI calculators, their fancy graphing calculators. They thought that was so special. And this is not a graphing calculator and they're all off programming Mandelbrot sets on their calculators. And I'm like, this can do that. There is a way to set the pixels individually on this uh, dot matrix display. Um, although it's default mode is sort of just dot matrix of numbers, you can actually get a Mandelbrot on this. And um, that made me the cool kid for a while in a very, very small niche circle. Anyway, um, enough about that. Let's talk about this guy, the, the, the DM42. I've only had it for a couple of days. I haven't dived deep into its functionality. This is just gonna be my first thoughts. First thought when I opened up the boxes, I, I was worried it was gonna feel cheap and chintzy. Um, it feels good, it's got nice weight. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the original 42S. It's narrower uh, width-wise. It's, it's narrower in every dimension, um, but it feels a little bit more solid. Um, this has got a sort of, I'm not sure what the plastic is, but a plastic case. Um, this is metallized rubber, um, and that feels good. The screen is much larger, which is great. Um, it means because uh, RPN and the HP system is a stack-based um, interface, uh, you can see the full stack here, whereas you sort of have to remember what was in the stack. We could scroll through on the display, but here you can see it all on the screen, which is nice. Um, the other thing that they've done here, which unlocks some cool functionality, is they've added an additional row of keys up the top. Um, on the 42S, uh, when you go into menus, the top row of keys become sort of soft keys. Let's see if I can uh, show you there. So a little, I'll zoom in and show you this stuff, but there's a little menu down the bottom which overrides these keys, which means you can't use these keys without hitting the top function menu to get back to the top function keys, if, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, this guy gets around that by just having its own soft keys. And that means they don't need the top function button. So all the buttons are the same, with, except for the addition of this top row. And this, when you press uh, shift zero, you'd get the top function keys on the other calculator. Here it brings up a setup menu. And what that exposes you to is a file system. It allows you to set settings for how you want the display to look. But the really killer feature for me is the fact that you can download and upload programs. Um, now, why do you even sort of use a calculator these days? You've got a phone. Um, phones are great for sort of basic arithmetic, um, but I find myself in a shop frequently. I'm either doing electronics on my electronics workbench, and I need to calculate a cutoff frequency or um, I'm working on the lathe and I need to do some math so I don't screw up a part and working with inches is a pain in the ass. I have a calculator around me at all times when I'm in the shop. When I was in business and, and working as an executive, I carried my calculator to every meeting for doing just sort of quick little sums to double check things. I'm not great at mental arithmetic. And even if I was, there are just things that it's, it's easier to do um, with a program or with a calculator in your hand. And it just feels nice to have it. Um, whereas a phone, um, you sort of can't use it blind, not that you're not looking at a calculator, but you sort of, when you know, and you have the muscle memory for where all the keys are, um, it gets really quick and easy to use this stuff. Um, so I like having calculators, but as happened with the 42S, um, the first one, it died in shop use. So when I'm using my real one in the shop, I always keep it in a Ziploc bag. I can see everything, but it keeps it at a level of protection um, from sort of solvents and fumes and flux and dirty hands and other things that happen when you're working in a shop, um, which is why this one hasn't suffered the fate of the other one. I was hoping that this guy would have um, sort of better fit and finish. It's, it's not quite there yet. Um, my sort of initial perspective on this is that in terms of the, the, the file saving functionality in the bigger screen, that's fantastic. This means this will absolutely be my daily driver. It just doesn't feel as good um, as the original HP. The buttons are, because the dimensions are smaller and because it's got that additional row, the buttons are smaller. Um, they don't have the same rounded edges. They don't feel as smooth to the touch. And I'm not gonna be able to get this on video, um, 
but the key click here, let's see if I hold it to my mic, it's clicky, which is good. The travel is okay. Um, well, my mic's down here. Let's see if I can do that again. This is sort of just smooth. You can't hear it, but it just, it feels, it's got that rubber, then the good detent, it's not a hard press. I could press these keys all day. These ones, yeah, um, it's not gonna stop me from using it, but it just doesn't feel that level of quality. Um, and on the topic of fit and finish, the holes around each of the keys is a little bit larger, which gives more opportunity for ingress of nastiness. Um, the printing, the screen printing on here, it's not great. Um, you can see sort of the pixels. It's just not that high quality um, screen printing that you have on, on the other calculator. I'm concerned that these will rub off over time. Um, I'd love a backlight on this screen. That, that The other one doesn't have it, but this one could have it. And um, that's nice for working in dark environments. Um, the other thing that I don't love about this is, and this is really not a nitpick on the DM42S, is kind of where I was going with this calculator was saying, okay, the 42S has a great keypad layout, um, great general usability. There's a lot of really great design inspiration you can take from it, but computers are a lot faster than they were in 1988. And so I wanted to improve the programming language. Uh, after the 42S, the HP released a 48 series. I own a couple of those. I don't even know what they are. I'm sort of ashamed of them. Um, the 48s sort of were trying to be graphing calculators and I never really understood graphing calculators. Um, I think they're useful for high school kids who are asked to draw a plot of something and they can just do it on the calculator and sketch it. But when you're doing mathematics, what you want to do is you want to find the maxima, you want to find the minima, you want to find the roots. You can do all of that on an HP 42 calculator without having graphing. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So HP made this 48 series and then the 50, 40, 49 series and then the 50 series. Um, and they improved the programming language a little bit, but they, it's, it's a little clunky. It's um, sort of a reverse Polish notation plus Lisp. So I built for this um, my own functional programming language that was stack oriented. So it sort of worked in the natural way you use the calculator, but allowed you to write some more serious programs and you could use uh, with SD cards on this guy, you could access much larger data sets. Um, often when I was in a business role, I'd um, have my, laptop open in a lot of meetings. I'd be running SQL queries on large databases to try and work out, you know, what's happening with revenue in a certain segment or whatever. Being able to do that on a calculator would be cool just because of the UX and you're not having to bring a laptop open. Anyway, that's where I was trying to go for with this. Um, this sort of has the processing power capable of doing that. It means that your 42 programs run fine, but you're not going to be writing advanced database operations in the programming language that's on this. The great thing though about this is I believe it's all open source. You can flash the ROM um, through the, the USB. So there's an opportunity that I could go out and build uh, all that stuff on this guy. What else do I want to say about this? Um, you know, getting fit and finish is hard. Uh, HP is obviously able to do it at the scale of production that they are at. Um, you can also get it in small batch runs when you have a lot of hand finishing. This sort of fields in the middle. Um, I think this was around 200 US dollars, um, cheaper than what you can buy a secondhand 42S for. And uh, given that it's more functional, I think you're getting more bang for your buck. But honestly, I don't feel as bad about killing this guy. It doesn't feel like an heirloom piece. Maybe it's just that I have the emotional connection to the previous guy because of, um, you know, I got it from my dad and all that sort of stuff. Um, but this just doesn't feel like a Swiss watch or something like that. Um, I'd pay like three times as much for this sort of functionality uh, with great fit and finish. Oh, that reminds me of the other thing I wanted to say is it's got the big screen, but because it's trying to be a really faithful reproduction of the original HP 42, it doesn't use it well. Um, a lot of the menus that they've added on just don't aren't designed well in terms of the use of the layout. It just feels sort of tacked on. It feels like you've got the HP 42 stuff there that's been tacked onto this screen. There's a lot of blank space when, I mean, let me just turn it on. Um, when you're using it, uh, I'll, I'll zoom in and bring you some shots. It just doesn't feel like it's the, eight, the, the calculator was designed for the ground up for this screen. And it wasn't because they're taking a two line screen and putting on this gorgeous dot matrix large display. Um, so building it from the ground up would be nice. It would be nice to make better use of the screen. It would be nice to make better use of the CPU and RAM capabilities with an updated 
operating system, but that would be no longer an HP 42 clone. Anyway, um, they say that they encourage you to take this guy apart, which is why I think it doesn't have the fit and finish that, that you'd want, but let's open it up, let's take a look and um, go and have a look inside. So here's a closer view of the lineup. I misspoke. The one that I pulled out was a 41CV, not a 41 original. Um, so that's why it's got the upgrade option. Here's a 41C, at least it's just the front panel of it. I was not always as respectful of, of calculators. Uh, this one I found at a thrift shop locally here in rural Oregon for $2. That was a very good purchase. Anyway, here are the, the, the two main stars of the show, the 42S and the DM42. Um, here, pocket calculator on the screen. Um, hopefully you can see. Um, but yeah, two-line display. If you bring up a menu, so here's the solver menu. I don't know if I've got any functions. Uh, do I have any programs here? Uh, catalog. No, no program stored. Um, but you can do solving, integration, uh, a bunch of linear algebra and matrix operations, statistics, all that sort of stuff, all on this little two-line display. And here is the 41, or DM42. So much bigger display. In addition to seeing the X and Y register, you see T and Z, which are the other two stacks, and the alpha, uh, which lets you store letters. So I can type things in this way. It's been a while. I used to be really good at that keyboard format. But they also, in alpha mode, if you press shift, I believe let you, uh, what's the way of changing it? There is a way of changing it. Um, you can use these keys, all as letters. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring you in even closer so you can see the fit and finish um, and maybe get a sense of what the keys like, feel like. Just smooth, shiny, well-worn and rounded. A little bit sharp and jaggedy and plasticky. I mean, they're both plastic, but this feels real plastic. Okay, how close can I focus? I don't know if you can see the quality of that printing is not great. Yeah, it just doesn't look as classy. The colors aren't right. The yellow versus the orange. Anyway, I'm nitpicking. Let's go have a look inside this thing. I believe it's just two screws and then it unhinges. Serial number 6474. I wonder if that means they've only made, well, not only made, they have made 7,000 of these. All right. So we have an STM32 core um, in there. What else do we have? Being short-sighted means I take my glasses off to see what's going on. I'm not sure what that chip is. I could Google it. I'll put it on the screen over the top. I'm sure there are other more thorough teardown videos, but clearly it's designed to be told down. It says release LCD connection before unscrewing display. So that is back here. All right, put that out. We've released the flat flex for the LCD. I'm curious what the keys are. There's a serial UART port here and a bunch of jumpers. So I think the idea is that you can upgrade it or add additional functionality um, through hardware, which is, is kind of cool. I mean, let's have a look at what else is on here before we open it up. So we've got the USB port, the flat flex for the, <coughs> excuse me, LCD. There's a reset button here, which is exposed to the back of the case. But there's another button here, which is labeled PGM, which I assume is for, for programming. That's cool. There's the infrared LED, which, you know, the HP originally had, so you could connect it to a printer. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily necessary, but they have it. And then we've got little, I think these are collapsing dome keys. There is actually a, a, a film over the top of this, a fairly thick film. Um, it's going to protect, I mean, I guess it's to hold the domes down. So that may protect it from um, water ingress. Um, I'd love to see it more tightly sealed though uh, for 
complete sort of dust protection. That's what originally, as I said, killed my 42 was um, dust or solvent or something got in here and ruined the keyboard. But you can see how much smaller the PCB is than the original. Anyway, that's what's inside here. I'm not going to take the LCD out, I believe. That might be ultrasonically welded in place. Whatever. These keys are held in place nicely too. They're, they're part, they're integral, so they're just little flexures, flexures. And there is a metalized or metal plate here too. So it actually is pretty well built. Um, the fit and the finish concerns were really around the feel of these keys, the printing, um, and the key press feel. All right, let's get this guy back together and uh, hopefully we will not be releasing any magic smoke today. I think I like this guy. I like it, I don't love it. I encourage you to get one if you like HP calculators and you want a new daily driver.